In search of the untold stories linked to the many blacksmiths that operated in East Galway, I next find myself in the parish of Gurcheen. A lifelong resident of Cloonkeen Carroll, it is here, just up the road from John Joe Ward's house, that Pat and Larry Walsh's forge operated. On a crisp autumn night, myself and local historian Emma Laffey sit down with John Joe and PJ Finnerty for what turns out to be a very interesting conversation. Now, you were going to tell me a little bit about the Walshes that were blacksmithing for the area here. Yeah, I know, yeah. I remember going up to Larry. Larry, there'd be a row of horses down along the side of the road waiting to be shod in summer now, you know, in summer and springtime. And Larry would be there, he'd be bent in the anvil, uh, and you'd have to pull the mellis yourself to keep the fire going. Everyone that's come in with a horse would have to work the mellis themselves. You know, did you ever see, did you ever see, were you ever in the forge? I wasn't. You weren't? Well, I had a video of horse showing there, and it showed you how to how, how to show a wheel. That was, you know, the iron ring that was around the wheel, so you had to put that on and all, you know. But the welders used to do that as well. They used to show, show wheels. They'd be putting the iron rim, they'd have to light a big fire and redden the iron. And you'd have the wheel left down flat. And you'd drop, you'd drop the hot iron, red iron down, and then you didn't start pouring water on it. And, and you'd see the wheel go up on fire. And you'd, you'd keep running water on it until you cool down, and then the tire starts tighten on it, you know. They'd be only doing, they'd only do that now, when they'd have maybe five or six wheels to together, the one fire would do the lot thing, you know. It shouldn't, shouldn't be what your wife's doing for one wheel, you know. But the horse showing like was, was the big job doing done it. But uh, that would be there anyway, and uh, poor devil, he'd be sick now after the nice drinking, and, He'd have five nagging bottles of porter left in the bench, and he'd take another swig out of it. <laughs> and while there are funny memories, the Walshes experienced a great tragedy. While Pash was away with the army during World War I, his family was ravaged by the Spanish flu. Both his father and two brothers died. Paddy Welch, was he the died of the flu? His father and the two brothers. That was while Pash, the other brother, was out in the war. That all happened while Pat was out in the war, that the, they died from the flu. He was showing horses. He wasn't a soldier. He was showing horses. If, if you went up in the forge, you were up there before, wouldn't you? His army, his army number now is up there. You see it in a source graph. John, Joe, I'll just bring you back. So there was, there was two brothers. There was Larry and Pat. And they were both very different characters. Pat was a kind of a big shot, like... He, and Larry was the worker. When when Smith's down here was the, the biggest days, there were 450 acres, and Smith had come up in horseback. He always came. Smith never drove the car, even though they had that much money. The wife drove the car. But uh, he'd come to Ford in horseback when he wanted to get the, the horse shod. And Pat, the lad was out in the war. He'd see Smith coming up in the last act. He was referred to as Mr. Smith, no, not Smith. He was always called Mr. Smith. But uh, as soon as Pat would see Mr. Smith coming up, he'd go up in the forward and he'd tell Larry to go down and eat his dinner. <laughs> the way he, he'd do Mr. Smith's horse because he was a big nice, you know. <laughs> But was Larry, was it, that used to shoe most of the horses he used uh, to do? Was it Larry that Larry most did to... all the shoe work. And, and Pat did all the complicated work. Uh, he had, they had no electric welders now at that time. Uh, if you want to do a bit of welding, you read in two irons and you set a hammer on them and you stuck them together. They used to use sulphur and the giant <coughs> to make the two irons stick together. They used to make a lot of slaves for cutting turf with well. Did you ever see one of them? They used to make the water with them. And they used to put, uh, they used to make glass in, in, through the, in through the steel to, to harden the steel and to make slain off a shiny. You'd always know the wheels playing. They'd be shiny, it'd be like a mirror always. And Pat would be, Pat used to do all that slain work. And uh, 
any other complicated job that would come, fix and plough with her. And there was an awful lot of iron work that time for all iron work. For Lohans, I remember. That's where it all came from. All the, all the shoe and iron came from Lohans. To the great shop that time. Well, and the finish was bringing it home on the bike, but it used to be delivered before that when he was, when he was working in a big way. And he'd always have it. Another half show was made up in the rack. The way he wouldn't have to make it when he'd bring in the horse. <coughs> you know, to save time. He could have 20 or 30 pairs of shoes made. And they'd be hanging up there in racks. And uh, the minute the horse would come in, he'd, he'd, know the, he'd know the size that would go on the horse. Be able to measure them, be looking at it. So what they used to do then, they used to take the shoes, when the, when the shoes would be on about, we'd say six or seven weeks. The, you know, the horse would over, it, 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 it'd, be, it'd be growing all the time, and, and the, the shoe would get loose. So what the, they used to do, they, they called it, remove, says remove, they used to call it. If you took off the shoes and dressed them and cut the hooves and put the same shoe on again, that was called removes, and do you know the do you know what he used to charge to get that to do that? Four shillings to put on the four shoe, take them off, and cut the hoof, and put them on again, and tighten the nails. Four shillings, but you you get you get three pints for for four shillings. That's it. For a minute, you know.